I thought it was a, you know, a tale of two halves. I thought they, they really played well in the second half. I thought the execution was really good. Uh, the young kid, Bolt, uh, the big kid in there, uh, shit, he reminded me of Taco down there with his size and his ability to finish around the basket. I think he really imposed his will the second half, and, and they were able to get some separation. You know, I thought you know, we had our opportunities. I thought in the second half we had a lead, and uh, we went through a little bit of a drought, about eight minutes. And uh, I think in about 13 minutes, we only got four field goals. And uh, we can't have that in games like this. You know, our offense has to complement our defense. And uh, tonight, it really didn't. What did you see specifically during that drought? Was it just, you know, you were unhappy with the offensive rhythm? Was it things they were doing defensively to kind of get you guys out of rhythm? Or? Well, they, they're a good defensive team. They're long. They're very active. Uh, but, you know, and so you give them credit for that. I think they, 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 they game plan well for what they want to do to, to try to slow us down. You know, I also think for us, you know, I, I think we have to ball, move the ball a little bit better, a little bit more. I think the ball gets stuck and gets stagnant for us, and that, that hurts our offense. And I, I think we, and, and then we got to step up and make shots. I mean, I think we still get good looks. I still think we've had some open looks, uh, no different than the teams we're playing, and we have to have the ability to knock those down. You know, we, I have a lot of confidence in our guys, and, uh, and they're capable of it. So it's just a matter of stepping up and, and knocking them down, you know, when the opportunities present themselves. Uh, I've been pleased, you know, for the most part defensively. I think the last two games, I'm a little less, you know, pleased with it. I think uh, the game in SMU, I didn't think we defended as well, you know, the entire game. And I thought this game right here, I thought especially the second half, same thing. I didn't think we defended as well as we needed to, to in this conference, that's for sure. So uh, we have to pick it up there. You know, we, we know we can be a better defensive team than we have. First half, you know, we gave up 41.7% from the field. Second half, we gave up 567 from the field. I mean, that's tough. You gotta, we got to be a little more stingy defensively than that, and, and we have been. So we have to get back to understanding that that's our identity. With both, and you knew you'd be a Problem. Is that why you went to the bigger lineup today, starting with Collin and Avery? Uh, that was part of the reason we went to the bigger lineup. We wanted to, you know, have two bigs out there, try to keep Collin out of foul trouble, figuring they would go into Bolt and want to try to get him early fouls because he's such a, a load in the post. And that, that, that did help prevent that. And so I thought that part was good for us. And, you know, Avery can give us, you know, different things than, than Collin gives us. You know, he's a primitive young man who can also step out and, and face up and knock down a shot. Uh, like you said, it helps us on the rebounding. It helps us on the backboard some as well. Cincinnati. No, that was huge, especially in the second half in their runs. I mean, I think shoot, the majority of our turnovers came in the second half. We only had five at halftime. So, you know, we ended up having, what, nine turnovers in the second half. And I want to say probably, uh, I don't know what it, I don't know if it says it on here, but I felt a number of them led to, to run outs and easier opportunities for them. And so when you're scoring the ball easily like that, that just gives you more confidence, gives you more momentum. And so I think a couple of our turnovers led to easy baskets. But I, can, I can definitely think of when Williams had one. I forget there was another one that I, during a crucial moment that they were able to get, you know, breakaways off of our turnovers. Did you feel in the second half that they had more energy on the glass? They did get more up for a dozen. No, I thought, I thought they made a good adjustment. I thought in the second half they, 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 they started really, you know, looking to try to, you know, go inside more uh, and, and, and trying to impose their will there. I thought they tried to put more pressure on the backboard. We know they're really good. They've always been historically a very good offensive rebounding team. So those guys have good habits. They know they're going to go and crash. And they put a lot of pressure on the backboard that way. And, uh, but, you know, you kind of figured that was going to happen. We, we told our players to be ready for that in the second half. And, uh, you know, we have to be a little bit stronger in what we do. Uh, you know, we pretty much gonna take what the defense gives us. You know, if, we, if it's a night where we get 25 threes, I'm okay with that. They're the right threes. If it's a night where we get nine, I'm okay with that, as long as it's the right ones. And I thought for the most part, you know, I can't argue with the, the threes that we took. I thought we had some pretty good looks. I mean, I, I can think of about three or four of them that I thought our guys had, you know, really good looks. And unfortunately, they just didn't fall. What do you think about the effort on Jaron Cumberland today? Didn't take a shot. I think he took one shot in the first half. Um, and didn't really see, he only scored six points overall, but seven assists. But overall, what did you think of your effort? Now, I thought we did a great job, you know, on Jared. He, I mean, he's a terrific player. He's, you know, he's a returning player of the year in our conference. And uh, I think he has a new role this year. He's not just a scorer. Before, he was really looking to score the ball a lot last year and years past. Now he's more of a facilitator. He will score if, if, if need be, but he's looking to run the team. Uh, you know, he has some weapons around him, as you can see. 
and he's utilizing the weapons around him, and, and I think he scores when he needs to. But uh, I, I thought our guys, as you mentioned earlier, I think our guys did do a very good job on him from the standpoint of identifying who he was in the scouting report and knowing what they're supposed to do defensively to try to contain him. But you're, not, you're really not going to stop a young man like him, as I've said before, about really good scores. You just want to contain him, try to slow him down, and I thought our guys did a good job. You said you haven't seen a full 40 minutes from this team yet. Are they close? Uh, you know, I, I think we are. I mean, we're right. I mean, we're in every game. We're up or in every game at the eight-minute mark, 12-minute mark. It's usually one or two possessions up or down. And so when you're right there, man, it's a function of just fighting through that. And some of these guys, the only way they're going to, you know, learn this is, is on the job experience. That's what I'm looking at with this team. You, know, you have a number of guys who have not been in this position in those roles. And they're having to be the guys that make those plays coming down to close out the game. And there's a learning curve with that. And uh, as, as tough as it is, it's tough on all of us, as you can tell. Uh, but I know that that's the only way you can get through it is to get a little bit better at it each day, learn from the mistake of the game before, tweak that, make the adjustments, and keep moving forward. But, and then you overcome. Because that's all it's about right now is us overcoming those situations. Because every time down the stretch, we're in pretty much the same exact place. We're up this game at halftime. We're in five or six-point game versus SMU, and you can name the other games prior to that. We're right there in the second half. You know, I think four-point game at SMU with two minutes to go. Uh, this game right here, probably with eight minutes to go, so it's probably a two-possession game maybe. So, you know, we're there. We just got to figure out how to get the timely stops that we need and, and come down and convert. And that's something that, uh, that we've been lacking in those closing, like, eight minutes of a basketball game. At 0-4 in the league, what's the sense of the locker room? Is there a frustration amongst the players that you sense? Uh, definitely. I mean, our guys are, the guys are disappointed. You know, guys are a little hurt, and uh, we can't have that. You know, we have to, you know, we have to keep fighting. We have to understand that it just takes a game or two to kind of get some rhythm and and to to get into another flow and to change your direct, you know, your trajectory. You know, the only place we can go right now is up. You know, so we have to look at it that way. The only place we can go is up. So what we gotta do is find a way to put a really good 40 minutes together and then build off of that. Because once you've learned that formula, you kind of learn what you're supposed to do to kind of close games, to kind of, you know, win those games when you have an opportunity to win them. And, and recently, we've had opportunities. What do you expect from Tulane on Tuesday? It looks like they're one of the most improved teams in the league this year under Ron Hunter. They beat Temple today. Oh, no, they're, they're a good team. I've, I've seen them play a little in scouting other teams. They're playing really hard. They have a number of older players that they bought in, and those kids are playing well. I mean, you look at how they're playing. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, you have grad transfers and seniors that, that he's had come in and sat out, and those kids are – all, you know, making really good contributions. It's going to be another heck of a game, but all of them are going to be. You know, we have to be ready for another, you know, hard-fought, you know, contest. You didn't have Drake Fuller today. Do you have any sense if he'd be available on Tuesday? Uh, I don't know if he'll be available. Uh, you know, he's he's been kind of, you know, trying to manage what he's going through right now for the last four or five games, and to his credit, he's been amazing. Uh, but it just got to a point where, you know, we we couldn't get to that break that we need where we get that four or five, six days where we're not playing a game where he can kind of – Keep on recovering, and uh, that's just hadn't been a, we hadn't been able to do that. So he's he's uh, he's fighting through it. You know, I, I want to see him get healthy. I think he can really you know help us, and he has so far. And uh, you know he was missed tonight. If, if this was a, a like a tournament game, would he have been able to play, or do, or do you think it's more debilitating than that? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm sure our trainer you know under, you know will understand that better than me. But based on I think I think if he could have gone tonight under, under any circumstance, tournament or this game, he would have went. So I, I, he, I, he couldn't go today, but uh, he is you know, he is healing, which is good. It's nothing that's a uh, nothing that's a severe injury that that will be debilitating for or, or you know, harmful to his career or anything like that. He just needs to just uh, recover from it. Is a groin injury? Yes. What's your big takeaway from today that you can work with the athletes and coach them up? Well, there, there, there are a lot of moments in the game where I thought we played some really good basketball. You know, I, I think, you know, I, I can show those and we'll talk about those. And then I'm going to, you know, talk about, as I mentioned before, you know, the first half, I think it's important to note, you know, when you're up six and you have very good possessions, you can extend the lead like that. So instead, when we're in that position, and we've been in that position several times, and that's what our guys got to learn, it's just not about the last eight minutes of the game. It's the, that's why I say 40 minutes of basketball. You know, there are periods there where we had a chance to extend our lead when we had momentum and we may have taken an ill-advised shot. We may have forced an ill-advised drive. Now all of a sudden, instead of you extending this lead to 10-11, now you come down because it's, it's a bad shot. 
or a bad opportunity, they come down and they score two times in a row. All of a sudden it's tied or it's a two-point game. So they're feeling like you dodged a bullet. You're like, wow, I dodged a bullet because it could have easily been extended and it wasn't. That's just inexperience. That's guys who haven't been in those roles not fully understanding what each possession means. And it's, us to, it's up to us to keep teaching them that. And, and, it's, and it's, it's a process of learning that. It's not something that, oh, I got it now. I mean, because every game presents a little different challenge where one game is because of some bad threes. Another game is because of some forced drives. Another game is because of some turnovers. And so each time you learn a little bit more about what it was and you put that information into young people, I think they start to figure it out. But to me, that's kind of where we are. It wasn't just the last eight minutes of that drought. That did hurt us. But when you have a chance to extend the lead in the first half, you should extend it. You shouldn't, you shouldn't settle for you know, some ill-advised possessions. And that's something that we have to mature and, and grow in. Oh no, I'm frustrated. <laughs> I can't, you know, I can't lie and say I'm not. I'm, I'm frustrated because I want it for our guys. I think we have a good enough team in this league to be very competitive and to win games. So of course I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm frustrated with it. But I also know that it, it all boils down to, to teaching. You know, I, I, I don't think if I was, if I was okay with it, I should be in this profession. You know what I mean? I think, you know, I should be taking it hard. You know, we have high standards in this program. You know, the guys that came before these young men have put us in a you know, great position of where we are as a team and as a program, and we want to uphold that. We want to, you know, we want to have that, we want to have that standard of excellence and be consistent. We don't want dips in that. And so uh, we have to find a way to get this thing turned around. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, y'all take care. Sorry, I got a little